Welcome to my video. This is a real-time pastel portrait that I did in 40 minutes as part of the 30 Faces 30 Day Challenge. Details in the description. Today I'm going to be trying this pastel mat uh, paper for the first time. Here we go, pastel mat uh, by Claire Fontaine. 360 um, grams per meter square or 170 pounds, so it's quite heavy very heavy actually, comes in a range of different colours. Um, this is the first time I'm going to be using pastel pencils really. Um, so I thought I would see how it goes. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, what I've actually been doing is this, uh, this is day 29 of the 30 faces 30 day challenge that I've been running. Um, the prompts are on my Facebook page as are the photographic references. So if you have a look at my Facebook page, if you're keen to have a go yourself, then you're more than welcome. All levels are welcome. Um, one of the problems that I've noticed that people have when they are copying directly from a phone, they don't have the screen on for long enough. And so one of the things I wanted to show you as just a quick aside, to make the screen turn on for longer, or keep on for longer, then go to your settings, Go to display, screen timeout, and change it to whatever you want, five minutes. So usually it's on for 15 or 30 seconds. Um, and that's the way to stop your screen turning off all of the time in a very annoying fashion. So I'm going to be using these Derwent pastel pencils um, specifically for portraits. I'm quite interested in these because, you know, they're portrait ones but there's quite like blues I suppose these would be for the eyes um, anyway they look quite well worn and that's because they are my mother's um, so I thought I'd give them a go she's um, the way that she's been sharpening them is with a knife to get this sort of chiseled effect not I've always found it quite difficult to get pastels into a point so we'll see how I get on today this is going to be quite a challenging portrait because I've only got a five sized um, paper. Is it A5? It's not, it's a slightly bigger than A5. Um, but it's going to be quite difficult to get a lot of details in. So I'm going to have to be quite careful and just plan it. Actually, I'm going to go for a slightly darker. So I'm going to just outline where I want his face to be because I do want to get his hand in as well. So his eyes are going to be about there, they're a bit of an angle. Um, but I might start just loosely placing the eyes. There's about an eye width in between the eyes. That's all shading there. He's got a nose that goes up, like when people open their mouths like that, um, their nostrils, the flaps of their nose goes up quite, quite a lot. So I'm just mapping this out really very, very loosely. Just to make sure that I'm getting it all on the page. And then, so it comes down here, it's got a bit of flap of hair that goes like that. That carries on around there. The hair carries on there. Face goes in. So look at the angles. Look at where things are in comparison to everywhere else, like everything else. So the, if you were to draw a line Horizontally from the ear, you can see that that's higher, yeah, the nose is higher. Um, so just keep an eye out for those kinds of things. It's got that flap going like that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this portrait. Um, so I'm just going to be mapping it out very quickly. Um, 
so we've got middle finger that's pretty much straight we've got a finger here that goes out like that it's got more dark there I found all of these um, photos from Unsplash which is a copyright free image uh, image site Right, you can see here. Hang on a moment. Can you hear that little meow? That's my cat meowing at birds. Um, I've got the dimensions of this bit a bit wrong because, yeah, because the face actually comes down like that. So if you spot something that's not quite right, um, rather than I would say rather than go for go with it, it's best to try and change it. Which is why you very loosely sketch things in. You don't start doing huge, amazing details around the eyes. You know, do the most amazing eye, and then actually it turns out that you've done them in the wrong place, and you have to rub it out put everything in very loosely and then you can see see where you are with everything um, okay so I think that's kind of enough mapping I'm this comes out a lot more but I'll sort of try and fix that as I go um, can't really can't see this um, sleeve I think it goes on a bit like that and then behind this there's a bit of skin so I might start um, just applying some colour. I've got some um, yellow to start off with. It's actually quite pinky, so I'm going to like I've got a range of these sort of pinky ready colours here that I'll I'll use. Um, I've also got the white. In fact, it makes me think I might actually start applying a bit of white here. So I know that he is not white, <laughs> um, but I'm hoping that when blended with a little bit of pink and a little bit of red, that'll give me quite a good skin skin tone. Beginners, like you can see, like I'm. This is all a bit muddled over here. I'll work it out when I get a bit closer to it. Um, when I do that bit in more detail. But I, I'm not going to spend my life rubbing things out. Um, if it's not right, I do think, yeah, do another line. Like make sure that you know what, what went wrong sort of thing. But you don't have to keep tacking your painting or your picture with the rubber. So this pastel mat is quite an interesting. It's quite. It's almost like. It's almost like fine sandpaper. It's really quite interesting. I'm going to blend this next. I think so. I've got um, some paint brushes, which I'll try with first. Um, these are just some very cheapy ones that I found. That I use for charcoal in fact I think you can see that I use them for charcoal because it's it's leaving a bit of um a darker 
a dark mark. Um, I wonder if I can use a sturdier brush. You can see that I use these things for charcoal. You sort of almost need a separate set of um, brushes for... Um, yeah, see, charcoal again. I wonder if I use my finger. Well, I'll keep going with those brushes. I'm going to start adding a bit of sh shading. Yeah, so just putting blocks of colour down first and foremost, and then I'll just keep building up on that. So far, my finger seems to be the best for the blending. And I'm just going to try going at different angles as well so it doesn't all look, so it sort of looks a bit smoother. Maybe I'll try and do sort of more circles. So I get a smoother finish. You can see that my phone still cuts out because um, uh, yeah, it cuts out after the um, it starts going dark after about three minutes, and then it will sort of probably turn off at five minutes. Okay. The other thing to use is um, a. Um, what do you call this? A cotton bud. Let's try a cotton bud. Oh, that works really well. You can get quite a lot of pressure on it. Oh yeah, I think I found my new favourite blending thing. And I think you'll be able to get quite a lot of detail as well. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to start doing a bit more shading on this side. Now, I do tend to jump around my portraits, and again, it's part of it's because as a watercolorist, you're always doing that anyway because you're waiting for things to dry. But on a slightly different note, it kind of makes sense because you don't want to spend a lot of time on one area if actually it turns out that you know it's not quite right, it's not what you wanted. And you need to change it. So if you do what I'm sort of doing now, sort of jumping around, um, it means you can sort of step back a little bit more from the piece as a whole and um, see if you're happy with it. So I'm using the, um, the cotton bud at a different angle. to sort of help with blending it in a bit. So I cannot remember what the prompt was. I, this, is, this is, my prompt is headache for this. Um, Cause this is how I feel when I've got a headache. How he looks but I don't know I think it he might have been feeling an anguish or something like that he's got tears sort of lightly indicate his teeth oh 
Um, I have got, have I got a black? Yes, this is a black. So this one seems to go down a lot more. He's actually really quite dark here. It's almost black. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find colours that are uh, actually in my hand. That's why I can't find them. So I'm just trying to represent where um, where the light tones are, where the dark tones are. It doesn't like you don't have to spend your life doing color matching. This these are not the same colors that he's got there, and I don't I don't care. It's um it's just about making sure that the tones. Are representative and you've got a 3d kind of effect you could do the whole thing in like blues or complete multicolored uh, multicolored colors there's a guy called um his name is david loganberg i'll put the day um his name um i'll put his name in the video so you can see but um yeah he's I mean, he's brilliant and um all his colors he does this thing called like california vibe style and uh, they're completely different colors you know they're um really vibrant random colors and they all look great so i think i'm gonna start putting in the eyes um i'm just gonna double check where the eyes are i'm just gonna put in these nostrils that is it that um and you see now i can i can easy more easily place where the eye is so i think i did get i'm happy that that eye is in the right place Then this eye it's on the similar line, so it's um, he's got a lot of shading on it, so and he's got a lot of shading here. So the shading will help you place where your features are. Now, if you were somebody that liked sharpening your tools, now would be a good time to sharpen them because this is not very good. <laughs> it's not very, um, it's a bit too blunt to get any kind of detail. But I do not know where my um, cutting knife is. I went on a ferry the other week and, um, and I took my knife with me and um, we're not supposed to take knives on ferries. So they did question it, but the guy couldn't work out how to make it work. So I think he thought that my knife was broken, so I, he let me, he let me keep it. It's quite fiddly now because it's such a, um, a small portrait. I think we usually do portraits this fiddly. Um, 
just to make his eyes pop so I can sort of see them properly I'm just going to add a bit of white for his eyes that's not white it's actually really grey but uh, maybe I can add yeah I'll add a bit of black where did the black go this is the black let me add the black He's got this, these bluey eyes, so maybe this is why there's such crazy, crazy colours in the pastel set. <laughs> he looks crazy. He doesn't look like he's having a headache, he looks like he's going to murder somebody. That was black. So the nice thing with these pastel pencils is you can go over the top and um, it's not it's not too stressful it's not like with watercolors where you might make a mistake and and that's it you kind of got to put up put up with that mistake ha <laughs> look at him <laughs> oh he looks crazy crazy I'll see what I can do with the crazy look in a minute. Meanwhile, I'll keep him looking crazy at me. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit around. Yeah, it's like generally kind of good practice if you can work. Um, down because if now if I start doing his hair it'll start it'll ruin this bit if you see what I mean it really is like it's the dark so compare all your darks like this here in his mouth that's the darkest dark in the entire portrait almost same dark as his pupils so when you're doing this just keep making sure if this you know if it's dark here make sure that you're representing that dark elsewhere as well so i'm gonna start putting in his hair is that brown i might do so i'm traditionally you know because i'm a do watercolors i start I do light to dark and i find it very strange to go the other way around so I'm still kind of working out what what works best with pastels, whether it's um, best to work from light to dark or vice versa. Like if I do that, for example, put sort of you know, can I go over? Yeah, I can go over. So it doesn't. It's not nice and crisp. I suppose it depends on how hard you go. But um, yeah, it's all all good practice. Um, this is called Burnt Carmine, which is a very sort of browny, but ready. This is black. This is chocolate. I think I want chocolate here. Yeah, I think the chocolate is more this hair. In the interest of trying to finish this portrait quite quickly, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to be too precious about about getting things perfect. Let's do a few of these lines here. He's got, yeah, it's really dark over here, so I'll add some black. Where did the black go here? The widest part of his face is at the corner of his eye there. So, you know, do measurements like that as well. When you're doing hair, properly 
pick out a few items like if you if you don't have a lot of patience like me pick out a few kind of strands and make sure that they're correct don't just like go because mm, that does not ever look very good you can treat the hair as sort of one unit almost and then start like working away into like smaller and smaller units so he's got quite a goes up at more of an angle than I had it this too it's obviously got the darks there it's got a really dark bit there even that out a little bit with some red it's got quite dark eyes where did that carmine go what was that this is called terracotta Did the other one go? Let's use terracotta. Nice details to add in would like be in a minute. I'll do that. The the shadow. So try and um, quite good to include those kinds of little details. Uh, right, I'm just going to stop the video for a minute and I'll st restart you momentarily. Hang on. Okay. Um, I'm just fed up. My um, my camera is just so temperamental and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and it drives me to spare. And I'll be doing a tutorial and I think, that, you know, this one's a good one. This, uh, this will go well on YouTube and it doesn't record. It just drives me spare. And I don't know how to stop it because I do keep checking that it's on and it will be on. But when I go to stop it, it will just um, freeze. So, right. Chocolate. Uh, chocolate. No. Oh, that was that burnt carmine, which was quite good for shadows. Sort of has a that light bit there. <laughs> I think he looks particularly evil because I think that makes it, I think that bit looks a bit too red. And his eyes, the, that needs to be brought a bit more over here like that. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Well, I'm quite pleased with him so far. He's looking um, reasonably angry. Headachey. Um, so I want to get the most, the bulk of his face done before I move down to his hand, just because I don't want to smudge anything. He could do with a bit of glint in his eye, couldn't he? Give him a glint. Yeah, that's better. Um, glints are really good for giving people a bit of life in their eyes. So even if they don't have a glint in their eye, I recommend giving people a glint in their eye. Okay. 
So obviously with um, you can see some amazing stuff that people do with um, pastels. Very, I mean, absolute realistic. Um, can't tell it apart from a photo. But it requires a lot of time and effort more than I have. <laughs> What I really like about this is that it's got he's got um sort of a, a light a bit on this side where he's reflected reflected light. So I do want to try and capture that. Okay, hands. Hands are fiddly. Without trying to add up, add in the shading where the shading is, same thing. It's just it's um they they just are trickier. Let's merge some of these lines out. Right, well he's got a really dark bit here, so he's got a tiny bit of dark there, quite a bit of dark here. His knuckle is here and here. And yeah. Um, I do think I'm swapping between all of the colours quite a lot. And probably shouldn't be, you know. Um, uh, probably should be a little bit more. Um, like the, these reds. <laughs> I mean, this is what I do with watercolors as well. I mean, I just try out the colors. Um, if you were doing a big piece that you wanted to be, you know, good, perfect, you know, you would you would make sure that you were testing each of these colors out on a sheet of paper first. Quite difficult to make hands look less claw like and more hand like. A lot of people have problems with that. Maybe what I'll do next time is rather than a 30 faces 30 day project, I'll have a 30 hands 30 day project because <laughs> it's all good practice. Could do with a bit of yellow. Where did my yellow go? There we go. I really like the cotton bud for doing this. It seems to get into the little sandpaper grooves quite well. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to do to the outside of his. I'll just to give you a, an example of what else there is. There's these other pastels that come in blocks like that. Um, I'm going to use one of those for his top. I 
just to see what it comes out like really more than anything else. Okay. Um, it's quite nice to, you can't get a point, you'd have to um, shave these down to a proper point if you wanted one. Um, and I don't, these a little bit more purpley in the actual, oh no, a bit more purpley and dark, obviously dark on this side. So I might add now a bit of dark, a um, bit of sort of black. And see how that goes. So I'm hoping that will all sort of create an interesting colour. I must remember not to use this now because it's going to be darker I should not use it on the face not this side anyway um, this side was a bit lighter anyway uh, but he has it's quite dark down there And he's got, and it's quite light in bits as well there. Mm, and whilst I'm, yeah, I might just see what that looks like. Oh, which side did I use? I used that side. Okay. It's quite dark in this bit. I'm going to use the pencil for this. It's darker, I mean, it's lighter in real life. This, but I am um, just trying different colours, really. Okay, I'm not happy with his thumb. Is that a thumb? It is a thumb. So I'm going to make it a little bit more angular. And then a little bit more reflection there as well. Add a few little tones. So for a quick sketch, I think I'm pretty much done. I'm not too fussed about making this overly realistic. I'm going to, oh, back, I'll shave that bit because that's his, um, that's the bit behind him. And I will just make this again darker. Maybe I will just add a bit more of that original colour. And did I use this purpley bit as well? It's really quite hardy, so I'm going quite heavy with this, and it's not having much of an impact. Like 
it's um it's not you know it's not ripping through the paper or anything shall i add a background should we see what happens if i add a background actually you know maybe that's slightly um darker there Could probably do do with wrapping around with his hair a little bit more as well to be honest shall i add a background this sort of let's add a sort of a peachy background sometimes i don't like to put background in everywhere Um, it's difficult to know where to stop with background. Like, what about that? You know, does that look all right? Or do I go all the way over? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Mm. Also, I think I've run out of... I've run out of cotton bud. This is just um, a paper towel. That works really well as well. It's difficult to get all of the um, the details. The um, you know you wouldn't be able to do any details with that. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I'll see. I'll see whether I want to. I'll um. I'll faff around. I'll show. Show my mum and dad who are downstairs at the moment. See what they think, and if they think I should add in um, more of the background than I will. Otherwise, I'll post it like this. Um, so I think this has taken about. I don't know. 40 minutes or so um yeah about that um where did the brown go brown's gone missing brown's here um yeah so it's been yeah it hasn't taken too long it does take longer than some other mediums though like watercolor Oh, I know I'm gonna I remember I was gonna add in that shading there to make it look a bit more like realistic where did the pot cotton wool go now yeah so that went like that and then I can add that there and it should make it pop and then where there are shadows like dark shadow areas like add in add in the the dark of the black and where there are sort of really quite light bits I've lost the white now white aha I think there's a bit of a highlight on that bit so yeah just I could spend a lot of time just faffing around with this adding more bits and pieces but I'm I'm happy with that for the time being and uh Thank you very much for joining me.